Hello YouTube, it's Lion here with Hobbies of Man once again, and today we are doing another manga review. Now today we are going to be reviewing Super Sentai Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger, which is the primogenitor of what is today known as Super Sentai, or like the Bandai Sentai teams, and obviously Power Rangers, which is the American version of those same uh, Ranger teams, right? So that's pretty cool. This is technically not the first Tokuzatsu slash sentai type of thing in fact the creator of this uh shodoro ishinomori actually created kamen rider which is like the original uh and then this came about when he was like you know what one common writer is good what if we had five common writers um and then there we go this is why we have go ranger so yeah that's pretty cool i mean it's pretty interesting it's kind of a a classic manga in the kind of uh like, obviously, it's a classic manga because it's old, but it's also classic in the way that it inspired so much of what is currently important today, right? Superhero teams, specifically superhero teams in the Japanese sense, in the tokusatsu sense, all come from stuff like this. So it's pretty cool. I actually find it to be really interesting. So, yeah. Now, uh, if you guys want an in-depth product showcase, uh, you guys should check out my buddy Suave Reads up there in the uh, card. He has a video that is exactly that. It's a product showcase. He tells you all about this and he kind of goes over some of the history and some of the stuff that goes in here. So you guys can check him out if you guys want to, because I'm not going to do the whole showcase thing. Um, but yeah, so like I said, this is Go Ranger. I'm not going to call it the full name because it's annoying as shit. Uh, and the author is Shotaro Ishinomori, like I said. And the publisher is 7C, as you guys can see right there. And this is the classic collection, which is the same collection in which Space Battleship Yamato, Captain Harlock, Cutie Honey, Devil Man, and I think that's it. Uh, the the collection that they're all in. And we also have Common Rider coming after this. I think in December, I think is when it's going to come out, which is pretty cool. So, uh, what demographic is it? This is Shonen, and in, in fact, it's actually published in two different Shonen magazines. The first half of the book was in uh, Weekly Sh Shonen Sunday, I think. Let me check, I literally just checked this and I can't remember, yeah. Weekly Shonen Sunday, and then the second half is in Shogaku Gonensei, which is literally fifth grader magazine. So that's pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, the genres here are tokusatsu, science fiction, sentai, and I guess that's it, like action thriller kind of stuff. And overall, it was pretty good. I really did enjoy it. Adaptations-wise, this is this was concurrent to the TV show. The TV show was also created by the same guy. So this is kind of like one of those like cross-promotional -promotion materials where it's like, here, go watch the TV show. But if you read manga and don't watch the TV show, here's like some manga so you guys can be interested. So you can go watch the TV show, which is like a whole kind of insidious circle of uh, merchandising and uh, <laughs> what's it called trying to sell you stuff. So... Yeah, cool stuff. I mean, overall, it's pretty interesting. I like how they do that. It's a lot more interesting in terms of mer merchandising and marketing than they do here in the US, which is just like throw ads at you and uh, force you to watch them on YouTube for uh, days, right? So yeah, pretty good in that sense. Uh, Premise-wise, this is basically uh, not exactly easy to give you a premise for, honestly, because... It's two different series, it, or, it, okay, it's the same team, but they go on different missions. We start with the introduction of the Red Ranger, this guy right here, and the introduction of the world. Then they go on a big mission, and then that mission ends, and they go on uh, kind of other things. It's kind of like small snippets of kind of like secondary vignettes, stuff that like ties in with what you saw in the first story which kind of interesting, it kind of adds a little bit of uh, context, but it would have just been better to have it go that way from the beginning. But I guess in these kinds of situations, they weren't really sure and they weren't really aware of how to do this stuff just yet. So it makes sense that there's a lot of like uh, remodeling and reworking of things uh, over time. So it's understandable that stuff like this would happen. Um, but thankfully, these I think are more kind of finished than the second story in Space Battle of Yamato, which is one of my big pet peeves. But I'll kind of try to premise it a little bit 
basically, there's this worldwide terrorist group called um, the Black Claw, Black Cross, sorry. And in order to combat them, Japan and the rest of the world have joined to create the Eagle, the Earth Guard League, which is called Eagle, uh, which is kind of like Shield, right, from uh, Marvel. And they create super soldier armors, which are these, and they provide them to five spunky teenagers in order to defeat evil, right? Which is how Power Rangers works. And then we follow them on their adventures. And that's basically what happens. Um, and it was good. I did enjoy it. Uh, again, it's one of those classics. So it's not the best, well, the best written and it's maybe not even the best of its genre, but it is the primogenitor, the first the one that made it possible so we can't fault it too much because obviously 50 to 60 years later however old this is it's going to be better than it was originally right so yeah it's understandable in that sense yeah so plot line wise it's fine i mean it's mostly just snippets of action and characterization that tie together and uh create interactions between characters it's not bad but it's not amazing it's still kind of fun i actually blew through this I, I was pretty interested in the series um and i did enjoy all of the stuff that happened of course i was left wanting more and i would have really liked some things that we see in modern manga that really obviously are not gonna be in old manga like this um but overall i did enjoy it the beginning was definitely the best the original bit where we kind of learn uh, when we kind of learn about who the Red Ranger is and why he's like this and the way we learn about the Black Cross Army and the Earth Guard League and stuff like that, all of that stuff is interesting. However, we do kind of get lost a little bit, or at least I didn't like it as much when we introduced the rest of the Sentai team because, although they were interesting, because this is such a short book, there wasn't really that much in terms of characterization that made them meaningful enough to me to really care about them. Uh, which I guess is something that happens pretty early on in a lot of Power Ranger series today anyways. So I guess it's not that different, but it's definitely like noticeable. Um, and then we got into this cool action sequence with this like giant robot, which I guess is a precursor to Zords, which was really awesome. I actually liked that a lot. That was pretty cool. And then the second half, the, the, the ones that were in the fifth grader stories were kind of more like espionage based supposedly i didn't really see it but it was kind of interesting because we got to see kind of like less large action and more kind of like small uh what's it called like uh, cloak and dagger type of stuff but it wasn't really cloak and dagger it was just kind of like really small scale action sequences which i thought was interesting but yeah overall it was good not that amazing though just generally enjoyable characters wise uh it was pretty simple though like basically the five basic rangers there's a red guy a pink girl a blue a green and this time we have a yellow one although i guess the one that usually gets switched out is the green one for like black or some other color uh and there's only one female character which i guess is pretty par for the course uh i'm not really sure how it happens nowadays because i know nowadays uh there's like 12 rangers and there's like an even split between males and females uh most of the time so it's different, but like, it's not that different, right? Uh, there's the leader character. There's the stoic blue ranger guy. There's the strong guy, which in this case is the yellow ranger. Although usually it's like the black ranger, right? Uh, and then there's the girl, which is the pink ranger, obviously. And then we got the smart guy, which is in this case, the green ranger. I think usually the red ranger or the blue ranger is the smart guy. Sometimes he's the stoic guy. It really depends on the iteration, right? But Generally, we have those five character types, uh, which I, it sucks because girl is not a character type, but uh, that's how it works for Sentai teams. And overall, not bad. Good enough. I mean, they work. And at the level of story and the way that this is kind of working, we don't really need that much more. So um, it works. It, it, it functions and it does its job pretty well. And they're relatively interesting. There was the smart guy had like this tendency to do kind of like riddles which I thought were kind of interesting, but because they were translated from Japanese, most of the time they weren't really easy to kind of find or like learn or kind of um, solve, I guess would be the right word. 
So, I mean, it worked, but it wasn't that good either. But it was interesting that he had, like, a, an interesting quirk. Uh, world building wise, not bad. I mean, it sets up a logical reason for why you would need superheroes, and especially superheroes with power armor. And I guess that's that's what this is. It's it's not really like young teenagers with alien powers that give them armor. It's more like human made power armor that teenagers have to wear because for whatever reason they're younger, their mental capacities are uh, different or something, are more compatible with the armor than an actual adult. And then, uh, yeah, good introduction to the technology, good introduction to the bad guys, good introduction to uh, the wider world, but generally just really surface level stuff, enough to get you in, into the story and enough to make the story work, but nothing too deep, nothing that you can build lore on, and nothing that you're going to really, you know, grasp onto if you're kind of a person that enjoys lore. So, yeah, I mean, nice stuff overall, not really bad, not really good, just kind of like middle of the road solid right um art wise it's not amazing but it has an old school charm which i think i've grown to enjoy a lot more especially after reading uh battle uh, space battleship yamato um honestly it's not my favorite I, uh, I don't like it that much but it's good it functions and you can still kind of enjoy it even though it's kind of ridiculously old at this point and it like clearly has problems with the facial structure and the proportions and all of this stuff like it's not technically good art and the skill sense but it works in order to convey uh emotion in order to convey story and in order to convey you know general ideas so it functions as art and as information uh visuals i guess like i don't know how to explain it but basically it's like it it's kind of cute it does its job and it provides you with enough emotional response that it really isn't bad art it's just not art in the very skilled sense like someone that has per perfect proportions perfect body shades perfect body uh development and stuff like that it's not like that it's just enjoyable and kind of like fits and good enough for the purpose of storytelling so yeah uh fan service wise there's really none i I don't know, maybe the concept of fan service, I, I'm sure the concept of fan service existed at this point, but it just wasn't relevant to this story, or there was no reason why it would happen, so there wasn't any. It's just as simple as that. Uh, Rating-wise, this is a 3 out of 5. It's classic, and it's enjoyable, but it's not that good. It's not, like, amazing. It doesn't blow my socks off in any way. It's not even that great, because writing wise it's not sol it's not as solid as or maybe it is solid but it's not as good as something i've read uh, you know elsewhere and in fact i don't even know if it's even solid in terms of like modern sentai or power ranger type of stuff the original power ranger series is definitely better than this but this still has its value which is why it, i i would put it at least as a three out of five um so yeah I recommend it if you enjoy classic things um, and you enjoy having pieces of history and pieces of uh, merchandise that are meaningful to the fandoms you're in, this is good. And I, I, I'm keeping it because I enjoyed Power Rangers growing up. I, my favorite ones were the original Dino Thunder and uh, Jungle Fury. No, not Jungle Fury. I did not like that one. No uh wild force that was the one i really liked it was the one with the spheres that were different animals and the guy that was like a gray wolf uh, yeah that's the one i like um and i really appreciated them growing up i don't like them anymore <laughs> most of the ones that are currently coming out are pretty bad but i like the idea of power rangers and i like the classic power rangers that i grew up with and i wanted to have some manga of the original sentai team so that's why I'm keeping this. But if you don't like any of that, this is not going to be for you. Uh, you probably really shouldn't even bother checking it out. But if you're in any way, shape, or form, form interested in Tokozatsu, Power Rangers, Sentai teams, or in any other kind of way, classic manga, this is for you. This is something that you would enjoy. So for titles, though, uh, let's see, Leiji Matsumoto stuff. Basically, everything else in the classic collection is going to be pretty enjoyable, uh, if you like this one although it's going to be kind of very different feeling um so you know be prepared the subject matter is definitely different 
but the kind of style of the art and the kind of style of storytelling is going to be pretty consistent across all of the classic collections in my opinion so if you like this one you'll like the other ones so yeah that's uh, it for me i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please leave a like subscribe and comment down below let me know what you thought thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it and uh yeah see you guys later